Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday. Today we're going to be talking about BizTalk Server 2016 and Logic Apps, something that I'm referring to as Thunder and Lightning, and I'll explain why shortly. So in addition to BizTalk Server 2016 and Logic Apps, we're also going to talk about a recent blog post by Michael Stevenson about BizTalk and Azure Functions, which I found was an interesting read and something that the community should check out and be aware of. So you might be asking yourself, why Thunder and Lightning? How does this relate to BizTalk Server and Logic Apps? And I came up with this analogy in part because I'm a big football fan. And there was a tandem of running backs that played at the University of Southern California in the mid 2000s towards late 2000s that were that are considered to be two of the greatest running backs of all time, especially as a tandem. And their names were Lendale White and Reggie Bush. And in this case, Lendale White was considered the Thunder and Reggie Bush was considered the Lightning. Now, in Lendale White's case, he was the bigger running back but he was very reliable, he was dependable, and if you needed to get a few yards, he could get the job done. Whereas Reggie Bush was more of the agile and the speedy or the scat back that people like to call it. And his job was really the ability just to, to move quickly, gain a bunch of big yards you know, very quickly and actually um, was very responsive. Now when I relate these these two football players, the BizTalk and Logic Apps, you know, I, I see BizTalk is tried and true, very reliable, will get the job done when needed. But then you also have some use cases where you want a little bit more speed, you want a little bit more agility. And Logic Apps, with it being iPass and serverless, gives you some of these capabilities that are inherent within that particular platform. I don't want this analogy to be taken in a negative context. I think both of these two platforms have a place within the Microsoft integration ecosystem. And I think it becomes pretty interesting when you take these two technologies and put them together. And really that's the focus of this talk where we're gonna actually use BizTalk Server 2016 and the new Logic Apps adapter and Logic Apps in general in order to come up with some hybrid architectures that really highlight the strengths in both of these platforms. So here's a high level architecture of the first application that I'm gonna demo as part of this episode. So what we have here is we've got an on-premises line of business application. Doesn't really matter what it's supposed to do. But what's happening is it's interfacing with BizTalk in order to complete some sort of a task. What we encounter though, is that there's some sort of exception that gets raised as part of this business process. Now what BizTalk wants to do, it wants to actually go ahead and log a ticket within ServiceNow, which is the IT service management tool for this particular organization. Now if you've watched previous episodes, I've used ServiceNow a fair bit when it comes to SaaS based connectivity, and I'm going to go ahead and use it once again. Now in this case, we're going to have BizTalk instead of trying to figure out all of this ServiceNow plumbing because it's more of a RESTful JSON type service and we've already built this service inside of Logic Apps and are using it elsewhere within the organization, why can't BizTalk Server just tap in to these existing interfaces and reuse what we've built inside of Logic Apps? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use the Logic Apps adapter for BizTalk Server, which is part of the BizTalk Server 2016 functionality. And we're going to be able to easily call the Logic App, which in turn is going to use our custom API app in order to interface with ServiceNow. So let me walk you through the process of setting this application up. So this is what our Logic App looks like. Nothing overly fancy or crazy we've got an HTTP request trigger as the input into our Logic App. And then we've got three different calls to our ServiceNow connector. 
the first call we need to get the reference ID for the user that's logging the ticket. Next we need to get the reference ID for the assignment group that we want to actually um, log the ticket to. And then we can go ahead and create the incident by issuing a post command. And then we can see that we're passing along the sys ID for both the assignment group and the caller ID which we obtained in the previous steps. Here's our BizTalk process. In this case, what it's going to do is receive an XML version of an incident that's been raised. We're going to then simply do a, a map or a transform where we're going to take that particular message and transform it into the incident which has a JSON format. Now this, when I say JSON format, I was able to use the JSON schema wizard that's part of BizTalk server where I can generate an XSD based upon a sample message. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is send this request, this JSON request, outbound through this two-way port. And this two-way port we will map to our Logic Apps connector. And in order to make this work, we also need a pipeline. And as part of this pipeline, we're going to use the JSON encoder. Next, we have another send shape and a send port, which is really just going to write out our response from the ServiceNow process to disk so we can have a, a look at, at what the output is. Now, in order to get started, the Logic App Adapter for BizTalk is a separate download. It is only available in BizTalk Server 2016, at least at this point, and you can download it from this particular URL. I've also included this URL in the comments. Now, it's a pretty small download. It's only 7.23 megs, and we're going to get an ISO file as a result. We can mount that ISO, much like the other BizTalk media, and we're going to run through a very simple wizard. The wizard is pretty standard. We're going to accept an end user license agreement. We'll click install and finish, and we're done. Now, when we go to the BizTalk admin console, we're going to see that we have a new adapter that's called Logic App. And if we go ahead and explore this adapter, we're going to see that there is a URI that we need to provide. Now, what this is, is this is the HTTP endpoint for our Logic App. As of this writing, or as of this episode, the only way you're able to call the Logic App directly is through this HTTP connector. Now, if you have Service Bus, that's another option. Technically, that's not going to take advantage of the Logic Apps adapter. You can run that separately using the Service Bus messaging adapter. Now, in order to give a first class experience, you can have the, we have the ability to click on the configure button. And when we do so, we can now sign in to our Azure subscription. And really the purpose of this is we can use drop down menus in order to select our subscription, our resource group, our logic app, and the actual trigger that we want to invoke. So that's a nice feature. Alternatively, you could also just take the URL from logic apps itself, copy and paste it into the URI as well if, if you so desire. And this is the result of doing something like that is that we now see the complete URI in addition to the SAS token that we need for authentication pre-populated within our trigger callback URI text box. Now, whenever you're calling the Logic App HTTP endpoint and you are passing JSON, I highly recommend providing a content type. I've run into this before. I just find that uh, it's just safer to do go ahead and explicitly provide this header. And don't forget, if you are going to be sending JSON from BizTalk to Logic Apps, you need to use a pipeline which includes the JSON encoder so that when we actually take the XML message outside of BizTalk, because XML is of course first class citizen inside of BizTalk, we want to do that transformation on that message and we can use that pipeline in order to turn that XML message into a JSON message so that when Logic Apps receives it, it's receiving it as a JSON message. So let's see this in action. So now I'm in my Azure VM 
and I'm going to go ahead and raise an error, send it to BizTalk so that it can actually reach out to Logic Apps and in turn talk to ServiceNow. So here's the XML incident message that I talked about before. We've got an assignment group, priority, severity, a requester, and then a description of the issue, a category, and an impact. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the old copy-paste trick here. And now we've received an incident response. So I'm going to go ahead and open this and we'll actually see that we've got a ticket number of that ends in 05. So now let's pull over ServiceNow. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And if we go ahead and search for that particular ticket, we will see that sure enough, it was a DevOps assigned to the DevOps group and that I had logged it on May 2nd at 6.09 p.m. Pacific. So that's working. And I'll just quickly show the send port for the Logic App, even though we'd gone through this in the slides. But this is how I've configured the Logic App. I've got the send pipeline, the URI, and the content type. So moving on to part two. With part two, we want to do the opposite, where we want to initiate a call from Logic Apps and have it talk to our on-premises BizTalk server. Now in this case, I've taken a, a use case from work where we've got an energy trading system and we're receiving price, real-time price updates from a managed service. And we need to get these price updates for different commodities into our trading application. So one way we can do this is through Logic Apps and BizTalk server. Now what makes sense about this architecture is because we are getting these pricing updates from a managed service, we don't actually want them to be tied into our local infrastructure, our local data center. It makes much more sense to actually have them communicating directly with our, a pass based service such as Logic Apps and even we could implement API management in front of it and do some additional authentication and really use the cloud as that elasticity layer for us and then have it reach out to BizTalk server through essentially a BizTalk action that's available inside of Logic Apps. So let's walk through this scenario. Now in order to facilitate this communication, we need to have the on-premise data gateway installed. Now I went through this in an earlier episode when we were doing SAP integration with Logic Apps. It essentially is the same gateway you can go ahead and download it here. Also, we'll have it the link in the comments. Once we go ahead and download the gateway, we'll go ahead and install it. The default location is fine. We'll need to provide an email to identify this account with. Now, one of the caveats I ran into before is this account needs to have access to our Azure subscription. So I highly recommend using the same account that is the appropriate access inside your Azure portal. Then you can go ahead and register a new gateway um, if this is a fresh install, which in my case it is. I need to provide it with a data gateway name and a recovery key in the event I ever want to move this gateway to another machine. Now after that, this is, takes about a minute or two, uh, you'll now have a gateway that's online and able to connect in to our Azure assets. Now we're not done yet. With inside of the Azure portal, we need to register our on-premise data gateway. And we can do that by clicking on new and then doing a search for on-premises data gateway. Then it's a very simple configuration where we need to provide it with a name, a subscription, a resource group, a location, and then an installation name that we will refer to later inside of Logic Apps. 
Now there's a few other components that we do need to enable here. And these components come out of the BizTalk Server 2016 installation. One is a management web service that has the ability to inspect or interrogate our BizTalk installation. And you'll see why this is important shortly. So we can actually go ahead and create an IIS web application and we can refer to a location on our BizTalk installation path. And in this case, there is BizTalk server slash logic app adapter slash management. And you'll want to go ahead and test settings. Now what I had to do for this to work in my case was I couldn't use the default app pool. I went ahead and used an IAS, I created my own app pool called IAS logic apps. I gave that identity elevated permissions inside of BizTalk. So that's something to be aware of. Go ahead and take advantage of the test settings. If you don't get the green lights lit up, then you know that you don't have the appropriate access. Now, when you go ahead and call this endpoint, what it will do is it'll return different schemas that you have in place. And what it does is it provides this JSON file. You double click on the JSON file. In this case, it opened up inside of Visual Studio and it shows the different schemas that exist in my BizTalk installation. Now, in this case, I don't have a lot of whole lot of BizTalk artifacts. You put this in a production environment, you're going to see a lengthy list. So I guess buyer beware from that perspective. Now we have a, another application that we need to enable, and this is the, what's called the receive service. So similarly, we've got a location that exists in as part of our BizTalk install path called logic app adapter slash receive service. And once we have that in place, we can go ahead and access our logic app. Now there are a few different operations that are provided as part of this BizTalk functionality. There's the prepare message from JSON, prepare message from XML, and there's the send message. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the differences uh, in a little bit, but for my purposes, I only needed to use the BizTalk server send message. And the reason for this is that I'm actually going ahead and preparing the message that BizTalk is expecting inside of Logic Apps. And so the reason why I'm using send message is that in my BizTalk solution, I've configured and built it in such a way that it can actually receive a JSON message. Much like the other example, we're going to go ahead and create a pipeline that's going to take the opposite scenario where we're going to take a JSON message, turn it into an XML message so that BizTalk can understand it properly. And because I'm doing this work in BizTalk, I can get away with using this BizTalk server send message operation. Now, in this case, I still need to connect to my on-premises data gateway. I need to provide my BizTalk server URL. So this is the full path of the BizTalk server URL that I want to connect to. I need to provide authentication type, the username, the password, and the name of the gateway, which I just configured. Now to clarify, the BizTalk URL that I'm providing is the URL that we were, that we had created in the previous slide here, where we actually have this receive service that, that we've just configured inside of IS. Once I'm in Logic Apps and I've gone ahead and added the BizTalk send message action, I need to provide the URL for my service that I want to call inside of BizTalk. Now in this case, I've created a pricing service and this was a RESTful service and it has a URL of my BizTalk server address slash pricing slash service one dot SVC. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is provide an input message of body. So this is the native JSON message that was sent from the pricing service, from my managed service. So this is in a native JSON format. We're going to go ahead and call the BizTalk operation and we're then going to respond back to our calling application with the response that came back from BizTalk. Here is the BizTalk solution for this particular scenario. So as I mentioned, we're exposing a RESTful service via the web HTTP adapter, 
we're going to go ahead and do a very simple map. We're going to take the inbound price curve, which is a JSON message, and we're basically doing a transformation on it in order to construct a response. Now the response is extremely arbitrary. You're going to see what the output of it is, but basically we're acknowledging the fact that we've received this pricing request. Now I'm also going to write this response to disk just to prove that everything is working in addition to providing the response back to the caller, which in this case is technically logic apps and in turn logic apps is going to return that response to the original caller, which in this case is my managed service, which is providing pricing functionality. Here's the endpoint that I'm exposing from BizTalk using the web HTTP adapter and I'm using the wizard in order to provide this plumbing. So now let's jump into a demo. So I'm back in my Azure VM and I'm in a very familiar tool called Postman. And what I have here is this is the JSON request that I'm emulating the managed service pricing application would send to Logic Apps. So we've got just a name of a price curve, a date time, and basically a status. So when I go ahead and click send, what's going to happen is this message is going to get sent to Logic Apps. Logic Apps in turn is going to invoke a BizTalk operation. We're going to send that message down to BizTalk. BizTalk will take that JSON message, convert it to XML. We'll provide a response back to this service, and then it'll output an XML representation of our request to disk just to kind of prove the mechanics behind all of this is working. So I'm going to go ahead and click send. We see that the service has responded and it's basically giving us a status of OK with a, an HTTP status code of 200. If we head over to our disk, we can see that we've got a price curve. It's in XML format and it represents the same data that we had pushed from Postman, except when we pushed from Postman, it was in JSON and wasn't in XML. Now, just to, to give you some insight, here is the receive location for the BizTalk endpoint. No, there's nothing going on here with Service Bus. This is the vanilla web HTTP adapter. There's no relay involved. That is really occurring through our on-premises data gateway. Um, otherwise, this looks like a regular BizTalk application. I could call the same endpoint on-prem, um, or in this case, I can actually go ahead and call it from Logic Apps and take advantage of the BizTalk connector that exists inside of Logic Apps. Now, I did mention that I would touch on these other two operations, and so I'll go ahead and do that now. So, as I mentioned before, I'm having BizTalk doing this heavy lifting from a pipeline perspective where I'm going to be taking in a JSON message, doing some conversion into XML so that the orchestration can work with a typed XML message. Now, I don't necessarily have to do that. I can also use the BizTalk server prepare message from JSON and actually apply a schema. And what I can do with this schema is select the JSON schema from BizTalk and actually have it do that preparation for me so that when the message actually hits BizTalk, it's actually sending an XML message. So that's pretty cool. And I'm able to do that without the need for an integration account. Today on Community Corner, Michael Stevenson is going to talk about BizTalk and Azure Functions. So in Community Corner, I want to talk about a blog post that Michael Stevenson recently published, and it created a lot of conversation amongst the MVPs. So I figured it was worth sharing with you because I think it's worth exploring and worth thinking about. Now there's uh, two camps, certainly in this area, where there's some folks that think, oh, this is really cool. Um, you know, I could totally use BizTalk and Azure Functions together. There's other people that feel, well, I don't really get it because why would I go ahead and call an HTTP endpoint um, if I have the ability to write my own .NET code. So I'm going to let you decide uh, what is right for you. But I think what's uh, 
interesting is, is Michael has really made a lot of us think and challenge perhaps some of our own opinions or assumptions. And I thought it's worth sharing with you and making sure that you're aware of the article because you might find some use cases for it um, where it does make sense to do this. Now, one particular instance that uh, Michael's gone out to demonstrate is this idea of the, the CRM connector or CRM connectivity, where in this case, he wants to go ahead and use the typed SDK that exists from .NET and wants to build a facade around some of the CRM functions that he requires. And he's going ahead and using Azure Functions as a way to do that. And I guess one of the arguments around this is that, you know, within the Azure Functions, some of the deployment, uh, let's say, requirements are a little bit easier to deal with with an Azure Function as opposed to going through some of the gacking and dealing with multiple nodes um, and some, I guess, the prerequisites of doing that in more of a BizTalk environment. So once again, I'll leave it to you, um, but I definitely think this is worth exploring and worth thinking about.